Uh, <laughs> what's going on everybody man it's the third time i tried doing this video man uh the first time my, my dog was barking everywhere and uh, the second time she, she i had to put her in the room because she was just barking everywhere and she's barking in the room so it's just kind of creating a lot of noise it's the third time it's, it's gonna be good in jesus name it's it's gonna be recorded so Anyway, I know that's a weird introduction. Welcome back, everybody, to the youth videos. Um, I do the youth every two weeks for my church, and I do these videos for you, not only for the youth that can't come, so they can still um, hear the word, but also for anyone that's online. And so, thank you, everyone that tunes in uh, to the videos. Um, we're just gonna pray. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna do this again in Jesus' name. So dear Heavenly Father, we give you all the honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your grace and your mercy, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of this youth service. We thank you for your perfect care. Holy Spirit, have your way throughout this video. And I pray that anyone that watches, Lord, that seeds can be planted, that ears, eyes, hearts, and minds can be opened and sought and tendered into your word tonight, Lord God, to receive it. We thank you and we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, before I even get started, she was barking. All right. So, for the youth, I do have them to participate. And I do ask them questions. And so, this is for anyone, for the youth and anyone as well. But I just want to ask a couple of questions first off. And so, I titled the sermon. And it's called Realizing Perfect Care. Realizing Perfect Care. So, First question is, do you think God is perfect? Anyone that's watching, just ask yourself that question. Do you think God is perfect? And if so, in which way? Do you think God is perfect? In which way? And so, I just want to say that God is perfect. In every way. You know. God is perfect. In every way. I mean. Whomever's watching this. You may not think God is perfect at all. And if you do believe in him. You know. There might be some things right there. Between you and him. But I just want to say that God. Is perfect. In every way. That you could think of. And I have right here. And uh, first scripture is Psalms 18.30. Psalms 18.30. It reads this. As for God. His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in him. And I'm going to focus on, focus on that first point. As for God, his way is perfect. You know, there's, there's other scriptures that talks about God being perfect. Jesus, um, there was another uh, uh, place in the Bible that someone calls, uh, uh, he says, good master. And Jesus says, why you call me good? There's the one perfect. I said, uh, my father who's in heaven. And Jesus was uh, looking up to the Father and God for being perfect. Even though Jesus never sinned at all, he was looking up to the Father. And so, also there's another place that says, Be perfect as your Father is perfect. And I'm not going to get deep spiritual into that one, into the second one I just said. But it, the, the main focus point is it, it's showing that God is perfect. Now, Realizing Perfect Care, which is the title of the sermon, Realizing Perfect Care couple more questions is there ask yourself this again realizing perfect care is there a time where you thought you had no one at all in your life is there a time where in your life where you thought you have no one second part no one that could help you at all and the third part how did it feel so putting all three of those together, is there a time in your life where you thought you had no one at all? No one that could help you at all. Like you just had no one. And how did it feel? Now, <clears throat> we've all been through times like that sometime or another in our lives. If you haven't, it's just life. Life is just crazy. Life has uh, unexpected surprises. 
you know, but nowhere is in the Bible, nowhere is does God talk about life is going to be, you know, just a bed of roses, you know. Sometime or another in our lives, we're going to go through times when we're going to feel lonely. And we're going to feel like that we have no one at all. I've been there, you know, and it doesn't feel, of course, it doesn't feel good at all. And look, I mean, for you and for anyone, you can go to your parents and I'm not putting down on parents at all. Look, people are just generally are going to let you down. You can go to people and you can ask them for help. Well, that's people. Okay. <clears throat> there's going to be some times in our lives that there is people in our lives. But no, it's, there's going to be things that we're going to go through that we feel like that we can't ask anyone at all. I know because I've been there. You have people in your lives, but sometimes you can have people in your lives, but still feel lonely too, you know? And you can go to people, you know, for certain things in your life and ask them for help and, you know, ask them for, you know, for advice or decision making or just for stuff. And your parents, your family, even best friends, they're not always going to meet that need that you have. Your parents, friends, um, people are just generally, people are not perfect, okay? I'm not perfect. My mom and dad's not perfect. My brothers, my, my family and friends I have are not perfect. Some people can, you know, people in life, they can, they can help you out to a certain point. And then, you know, and then they can't do no more. You know, or they can't do this, or they can't do that, you know. People cannot meet your every need, and even your deepest need. Even things that you feel like you can't tell anyone, you know. Um, like I said, I'm not talking bad, I'm not talking down about parents. You know, your mom and dad can help you as far as a parent, and as a dad, as a mother, you know. But there's just a place to where... You know, they can only do so much. And I just want to use for a couple of examples, look, <clears throat> that people are not perfect and they can't meet your every need and that people have flaws and that God is the only one that is perfect and that can meet that every need that you have, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is, God can meet that need. God says in his word that he would never leave us, nor will he forsake us you know and I don't want to go too far uh, I don't want to skip ahead of myself but I just want to read this about some scriptures in the Bible so in two of them that people were flawless people um, are not perfect now that's what uh, and, uh, just one example King David King David was a king over Israel he was a, a man at the God's own heart and he sought God. He, he he loved God. And even he got betrayed by people. Even people that he thought were friends of his, that he thought was going to be there, you know. You got your bestest friends, you know, growing up, you know, in school. And, you know, they, 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 they took the fall for you. But I guess what? King David had friends for a long time, and they even betrayed him. We go to a step further. Jesus was even betrayed. If you look um, at the Lord's Supper, um, they had someone by the name of uh, Judas. He was the one that betrayed Jesus, sold Jesus for money. That's when Jesus um, was mocked and beaten. And, of course, we know he was crucified. But Jesus was even betrayed by someone else. Peter, for example, was another one who tried to stop the will of God. You know, People are not perfect. People mess up. People make mistakes. And people would just generally just let you down. And that's the picture I'm trying to paint. It's the fact that God is perfect. God won't let us down. God can meet our every need. I'm going to go to it right now. That's the uh, 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 second scripture I have. Philippians 4.19 
it reads this, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God will supply our every need. And, you know, sometimes, folks, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Life is just crazy, honestly. And not everybody can be there for you. Not everybody. Well, Jesus even felt lonely, okay? There's going to be times where we're going to feel like that. We're just not going to have no one around us. And if we do, we can't even ask them questions. We can't even, you know, we can't ask them about this and ask them about that because I've been there. And I'm preaching to myself, too. too. Those are the times that sometimes God just lets us get into those positions to just you know, look up to Him. You know, that He's the one that can meet our every need. And sometimes those parts in our lives are just so deep that we can't ask our mom and dad we can't ask anyone it's it's so personal that it has to be between personal between you and god and you know sometimes god allows us to get to them places to look up to him you know and that he is god that he is the main source that he is the one that can meet our needs whatever it is whether you know <laughs> Whether you even stole from your parents so you can't ask them that or your family or, you know, it's just, I'm just trying to paint some examples right here. You know, maybe just just some personal things in life, some conflicts. We have conflicts not only on the outside physically, but sometimes we have conflicts on the inside. And that even happens from the youth up into, um, into adult, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. You know, maybe you was molested. Maybe you was raped. You know, these are these are maybe you was abused. You know, maybe you aborted a baby. And, you know, but I mean, look, I'm just I'm just speaking truth here. These things happen in life, okay? And maybe, of course, it's not necessary. You know, some of those first two parts for the youth, but this uh, up parts, you know, it was for an adult. But uh, whatever age you had a baby at. Look, it doesn't matter what it is. God still loves you. And God cares deeply for you. He has that perfect care for you. God's love, God, in, the, in the Bible says that God is love. That's what love is. Love is God. And God has a perfect love and perfect care for you. And that no matter what it is, those conflicts, those things that you can't ask other people, you can most surely ask God. And God always forgives God always, he forgives, and, and, and that's why he sent his son to die for us. Praise God and that Jesus died on the cross for us, that we can have this fellowship back with God. And so, um, and God will meet our every need, no matter what. He will supply every need. And just some examples, look, this is an adult, this, this is an adult example. Say you need... Say something came up and you owe some people, insurance company, I don't know. And you just owe $3,000 or something. You know, maybe there's a bill that came up and you've been telling them, look, I can't get it, can't get it for months and months. And it built up, look, you owe us $3,000, okay? We need this money in three days. If not, we're just going to cut you off. We're going to sue you. We're going to take your car away from you. I don't know. $3,000 in three days. Look, I don't know unless you know a rich person that's really cool with you. But not a lot of people can just get three grand in three days, okay? That's in a situation right there that only God can meet. You know, someone for like me, you know, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not rich. You know, I don't have a million dollars. I don't just make a grand a day. But that is an impossible basically that's an impossible situation you pray to god you know trust me god can meet that you know in the bible it talks about is anything too hard for me talking about god and there isn't another example this is true this is the testimony for me my passport when i was uh when i was uh, supposed to i was trying to go to africa um probably about uh two years ago and uh on the mission trip i ended up not going um, but I needed my passport by a certain time and it, I'll talk to the people and it just all seemed like I wasn't going to get my passport. Okay. By this certain time that I needed it. And I went into my closet and I prayed and I sought God 
and I was just speaking victory. I was speaking that I was going to get it, and I think that Sunday, I walked out of church going to my truck, and my dad has an envelope, and uh, leaned up against my truck, <laughs> and was basically, he was asking me, what is this? And um, I saw uh, the name on it, which is Minneapolis, and that's where I had to send off my stuff uh, for them to send me a passport, social security, and just uh, some other stuff, identification. I said, like, oh, they're just sending my stuff back. And I opened it up, that's my stuff, and that's my passport. So God did that. You know, uh, another, uh, another example just true. Um, I had to go to summer school for fourth and fifth grade. And sixth grade is when I, I gave my life to Christ. And, um, you know, God can meet those needs where you feel like you're not going to pass the test at all, you know. And, look, sixth grade, you know, God just, like, I wanted to just, I want to do, I want to be serious this year. I want to do my best. I want to, and God did a lot on me in order to help me to, to be serious and to really be serious about my education, be serious about school. And I was taking the test, and I was like, I'm just going to trust God. I did study, too. So you got to put that. You got to study. And, you know, God can help you with passing that test. And so, but God can do stuff like that to, you know, help you to pass, like, a big test. You don't feel like you're going to pass it. And you studied, and sometimes your mind's just a little weird. But God can bring it back up, and God can help you to pass those tests, you know, that you um not thinking you're going to... um pass it and so uh of just a fourth example is school bullies look there's bullies in school we know that and it's terrible it's just there it's look it's just terrible but anyway here's another example say you got you're walking you got two or three bullies come around you it's just you and they're gonna try and fight you who's to say that god and that timing can't randomly send up a teacher or another or another another student you know and it ruins the whole plan for them because now there's a witness trust me god can do that. that's crazy that you're just walking two three bullets surround you they're gonna they're gonna beat you up and then automatic i don't know where a teacher just coming up and they gotta back off you know yeah that's crazy that reminds me of a video of a lion it was a, a couple of lions that was going to try to kill a, a an elk or um i don't know what it was an animal and these are the lions, look, family lions were getting into a fight. Basically, the animal got up and walked off. God say, that's amazing. My last example is my fish. My fish, Sonny. Look, I'm just giving you examples about how God is perfect. And God can meet that need in your life that you don't think he can meet. These are impossible situations. This is what I'm, I'm, t I'm talking about. About how you can, you people can help you out, but these impossible situations that God is perfect, God can meet the impossible, He can do the impossible. Nothing it says in God's word that God nothing's impossible with God. So, my last example is my fish, Sonny. And so, when I got him, man, he was about to die the first two, three, um, first month, two months, three months. I don't remember. I was really worried about my fish, you know, and um. I really thought it was going to die. Look, I know it sounds crazy, but I prayed for my fish. I prayed for my fish, and God met the need and, and, and supplied me with some stuff that would help him to live. But it's just crazy how it all happened so perfectly in the timing I was praying for it. You know, it's something about he wasn't getting enough oxygen, and also um, I got some uh, information about how to uh, care for him truly. And it all happened perfectly when I was praying. Look, God can meet your need no matter what it is. Nothing is impossible with God. And whatever the deepest conflict that you have no one to tell this to, you can tell God. I'm preaching to myself too, you know. And it's just we have got to just trust in God. And God will meet him. I have one more scripture, my last one. Psalms 138.8. It reads this. And I'm focused on the first part. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. 
So, <clears throat> no matter what it is, no matter what you may be going through, and even youth, you even do go through stuff too. And there may be things that you may be concerned about. But God, nothing's too big for him. And he will meet that. He will take care of that. And you can always talk to God. Look, I, I, I've been vulnerable. I've vented. I've let out, you know, deep things between me and God. And God is the only one. God will not judge us at all, no matter what it is. You know, there could there can be some pretty pretty deep things that you can't tell no one because you think someone might judge you. Like God's not gonna. God told me before, and this it's so amazing. I ain't gonna go into deep detail about it. But I was sitting at the table one time, and I was counting some change, and um, like some things were just going on in my life, <clears throat> and I was uh, hearing some other things, and it's just. You know, putting, you know, thoughts in my head, and, and it, was, it was just crazy, you know. And I just felt the warm, like warm, warm oil, just warmness on the back of my neck. And I heard a voice that said, I know your thoughts. Like, even some pretty deep thoughts, man, even some pretty deep things that you can't tell no one. You can tell God, and God knows it. God, God knows everything about us. I mean, He created us. I mean, and so God, and praise God, we have a God who loves us, who takes care of us, and wants to love us, and does love us, and and does want to take care of us. And so, <clears throat> some last things that I have is it's not scripture, but sometimes it takes people that you think that you can trust or will help you when you need something. Sometimes it takes people in, in order that you think you can rely on to let us down. And sometimes over and over again, just to let us know that, look, that God is not gonna let you down. That God is the one that you have to trust in. That God is the one that you can rely on always. I mean, people can help you out. I'm not, I'm not bashing on that. People, uh, uh, we, we need to help other people, okay? We have to do our parts. And I'm not a parent, but parents, they love their children. And they want to do what they can. And they do help us out. But that sometimes, God will put us in a situation because we're always going to other people. Hey, I need this. Or, hey, I need that. I need you to help me with this. I need you to help that. Sometimes God just wants us to, hey, I want to help you. <laughs> I want to care for you. I want to take care of you, you know? And so sometimes we get in... God lets us to uh, get in a situation in order to um, to let us know that, hey, I want to help you out too. And um, there's a song, I heard this earlier before I started doing this. Uh, have you ever heard of, uh, for King and Country, they're a, a Christian, um, Christian, what? They're just a Christian band. Um, not rock. I wouldn't say rock. But um, there was a, there's a song by them called uh, uh god only knows it's a great song it was the um it was the uh they got one version they got then they got uh, another version and it's got more stuff into it but um i do i have the lyrics but it's on my phone but it's it's a great song that talks about god only knows god only knows um what to think about you god only knows the way to love you god only knows what to say about you there's no one knows no one knows except for God. And I do recommend listening to that song. It fits perfect with the sermon and it fits perfect on, on the message and who God is and how he is the only one that truly knows us. So um I love y'all. God bless y'all. Uh thank you for tuning in uh tonight for the youth and uh like Lord's will in another two weeks we'll have another youth service. And I uh, hope someone was able to um, get something out of it. Uh, God spoke to you. I uh, hope, you, hope you felt the presence of the Lord. I hope uh, that you watched the word all the way through. And uh, so I'm going to just pray and then we'll end it. So, dear Heavenly Father, we give you all the honor. Lord, we thank you, Lord, tonight for your word. Um, we thank you, Lord, for helping me. With third time trying to do the video. But um, praise God, um, you've done it. 
And I just pray to anyone that heard this, Lord, that you spoken to them and that, um, that they would just look up to you, Lord, and that they would feel your love and your care and knowing that they can trust in you and just let you take care of everything. We pray all this and we thank you and we give you honor and glory all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. And if the Lord's will, I'll see y'all in another two weeks.